in the last video we derived this as an identity for a pair of uh, cross products. In this video we'll start from scratch and derive this identity for the same pair of vector products. So here's the problem and we're going to proceed very much uh, analogously to what we did in the previous video. We'll call this vector f this would be vector g and try to get our expression written in a component form. So we have f cross g equals epsilon f g times some unit vector. We'll just call it i like we did before. This is j, this is k, so you have epsilon j k i. And the ith component of this of f cross g is just that. So the ith component is this. Now f of j, f itself is the cross product of these, so we should be able to get an expression for this in terms of an epsilon symbol and vectors a and b. So we can say vector f equals epsilon a b and some unit vector and we want the jth component so we'll call this unit vector j and then we had labels m and n so this is m n j and the jth component of vector f is just this portion so say f of j equals that. And now we have an expression for f of j. Do the same setup for g. And say that vector g equals epsilon cd times some unit vector. And we want a kth component, so this will be k. And we used p and q for our labels. So you have P, Q, K, and the kth component of vector G is just this part. So say G of K equals this. Okay, now we have F cross G its ith component equals epsilon jki times f of j, but f of j is this, so epsilon m n j a sub n b sub n times g of k, but g of k is this, epsilon p q k C of P DQ. Now notice here these both have a J and Epsilon M and J that's the same thing as Epsilon J M N. This is just an even permutation of this. So we can write it like this put the J over here and these indexes still match so you don't need to do any further manipulation. And these are all set up to use our uh, epsilon delta identity like we've done in all the previous videos. But let's write it like this. We're just multiplying and adding scalars with these um, epsilon permutation symbols by assigning index values 1, 2, and 3 to m, n, p, and q. But the order in which we multiply and add is irrelevant, so you can write it like this, epsilon j k i epsilon j m n epsilon p q k and our scalars now we're ready to use our identity 
We know it will equal a pair of Kronecker deltas. Let's make a little bit more room. Minus a pair of Kronecker deltas from here, then this epsilon p q k a m b sub n c p d q. Now, what would these be? Remember the pattern. The pattern is inner inner k m outer outer i n then it is minus inner outer and then we have outer inner so there we have our labels now Let's see what effect this pair of Kronecker deltas has on this expression and this pair of Kronecker deltas has on this expression. Now here, this is zero unless k equals m. And here, this is zero unless i equals n. That's one way of looking at it. Or we could say equivalently, this is 0 unless m equals k. And this is 0 unless n equals i. And let's do it like that, because you see, if we go this way, we say, well, let k equal m, this k changes to an m. But if we go this way, let m be k, we can go either way, because we'll have delta kk, or we'll have delta mm. Either way, it's equal to 1, which is what we want it to be. So what we're going to do is, it works either way, actually. But we're going to say, let m become k. So this m right here is going to be a k. And then here we'll say, let n be i. In fact, we have to. If we said, let i be equal to n, there is no i over here. So we have to say, let n be i. So this n is going to be an i. So as a result of these pair of Kronecker deltas operating on this expression, it gives us this equals epsilon p q k then we have c of p d of q and now instead of a sub n it's a sub k we have a sub k and then we have not b of n but b sub i Let's just review that. Because, again, there's no hard and fast rule to this. And there's several different ways of getting the same result. Notice that here, this is 0 unless we have identical indices. So we could say, well, let k be equal to m. Then here's a k. That would have to be an m. And that would be perfectly valid. Or we could say, let m be equal to k. And that would change this m to a k. We went that route. Either way it works. Here we have, we could say let i be equal to n, but there's no i over here. So we have to say let n be equal to i. This n changes to an i. So as a result of this pair of Kronecker deltas operating on this expression gives us this. Now what happens when we have this pair of Kronecker deltas operating on this expression. So let's see what we have. Again, we could say let k be equal to n and change this k to an n. Or equivalently, we could say let n be a k. And that n would change to a k. 
and that's the route we're going to go. I think this just stays the same. Yes, because here we have I and M. So we could say, well, let I be equal to M, but there is no I over there. So we take the equivalent statement, let M be equal to I, and this changes to an I. So you have minus epsilon P Q K times C of P D of Q and then for K the N changes to a K so we have B of K and then A of I. So what we have right now is that the ith component of f cross g, which is really this cross this, equals this expression. And again, hopefully by now from all the work we've done in the previous videos, you realize that this is the vector c cross d, the kth component of it. So this is C cross D kth component times this A sub K B sub I minus this would be C cross D kth component of that. So you have minus C cross D kth component BK AI. And this is a dot product in component form that equals vector A dot with C cross D B of I minus this is a dot product in component form B dot C cross D A sub I. And that equals F cross G, the ith component. And then from what you saw us do in the previous videos, you realize, well, this would be the same thing then as vector F cross G, where this is vector B. And this is vector A. And that's our expression. And let's see, we were wanting to derive this expression. A dot C cross D times vector B. That's this minus B dot C cross D times vector A. So there it is. And again, F cross G, that is A cross B cross C cross D. So that's it for this video. We'll have a few more demonstrations of using some version of the epsilon delta identity uh, here. But hopefully from what we've done so far, you have an appreciation that this is a very elegant, very powerful technique once you kind of get used to how to manipulate the symbols and so forth. And it's this kind of abstract approach that can make complicated vector identities very simple. And of course, it's um, very useful to be able to think of this sort of abstract terms when you have to uh, work with tensors. Anyway, um, the um, playlist for all the videos is at the uh, website digital-university.org.